The funny name of section four of chapter three is called Box and Whisker Plots. We're going to take all of our data we've been studying and put them into a plot that looks like this. You see the box, and if you aren't visualizing it, let me just help you. Here, here's the box, and then these are the whiskers coming off of our box. And so it kind of reminds you of some sort of an animal, um, you know, I don't know, cat, rabbit, whatever you're seeing there, panther. But um, we're not really talking about animals here. We're going to be talking about a way to interpret our data. All right, that was supposed to be all in fun. Now let's get serious. We need five things in order to make a box and whisker plot. Number one, we need the median. Number two, we need the lower quartile, and number three, the upper quartile. And then take a deep breath, because the hardest part for most people in section 13.3 was determining the outliers. And we don't actually need the outlier yet. What we are doing here is writing our highest number, the greatest value in our data. So I don't really like the word upper extreme, because that reminds me of maximum. So I'm going to refer to our greatest value and our least value because lower extreme is not the minimum. We're just going to be gathering up our data. So for steps four and five, we're going to write the, the least number and the greatest number to make our box and whisker plot. All right, I left the first example worked out for you in the way that the book organized their data. The one thing I would do is list from least to greatest first then I would make my number line based on my numbers. So you see that they did not put every single number on the number line, but yet they did represent the numbers um, here. So let me just do one from scratch. So this was one example. After you listen to my example, you might want to go back and look at that example. But first we're going to list our data from least to greatest. I don't have a lot of room here, so I may... Um, jump down here and work number one and um, just just for the sake of space so give me just a second okay so it takes a little bit of time but it just is so much easier to organize our data when it's listed from least to greatest so I have 14 numbers here so halfway the middle is going to be seven numbers over one two three four five six seven so right here is halfway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, making sure I didn't count wrong. I need to find the halfway point between 12 and 16. So add those up and divide by two. And halfway between 12 and 16 is 14. Probably should have known that, but I did take the time to punch that out. So there's my median. Okay, hold on to that thought. Next, I need to find my, that's step number one. Step number two, I need my lower median or my lower quartile. So if I had seven, I'm going to count three over and stop. And then I have three to the right. So my lower quartile is nine. So my upper quartile is 25. And I am ready to make my box. So next, I need a number line. So I am building my number line by fives, and my median was at 14. So my median is right about here, 14. There's my first dot. You can draw a line through it. And then my lower quartile was nine, so it's just below 10. So there's another line through it. You can put a dot representing that lower quartile. The upper quartile is right on 25, so there's another dot. And there's my box. That is 50% of my information, my data, falls within this box. 50%. Because I cut it into fourths, and then I gather two fourths and two fourths together. That's that interquartile, remember. This is our interquartile range. Now, here it should look even, except for my numbers, I spread them apart. So my box here looks like it's split exactly in half. But what this is telling us is that within the 50%, we have a bigger range between our median and our upper quartile. The numbers have a greater difference, a bigger range, than we had in our um, this 
between the lower quartile and the median. So there's a bigger gap between 25 and 14. There's a bigger gap than between 14 and 9. That's why the line is not in the center. It's not supposed to be. Now we're ready to place our whiskers. The high whisker is at 33 and our low whisker is at about 3 and there's our box with its whiskers. Now we'll talk about outliers later. We do not have to find our outliers for these um, graphs, for the box and for these plots, the box and whisker plot. You go ahead and try number two on your own and I will check for that tomorrow. All right, when you look at the back, they're gonna give us the box and whisker plot. Maybe this will be easier if you had a hard time uh, actually understanding how I made it. Now we're going to interpret a box and whisker plot. So there are four parts of a box and whisker plot and they may differ in length. Each part still represents one fourth or 25% of the data. A longer whisker or box shows that the data has a greater range. That's what I was trying to show you. It's a bigger difference there. A shorter whisker or box shows that the data is more closely grouped or has a smaller range. Closely grouped means a small range. So don't let the, the fact that it's spread out uh, confuse you. So here are some cute computer purchasing information represented from Electronic Town and between them and Best Purchase. We're going to compare Electronic Town and Best Purchase and look at their pricing of their computers. So what percent of computers at Electronic Town cost less than 325? So let's locate three. There's 350 so 325 would be right here. So this is the line, the imaginary line. It's not catching. There we go. So exactly for Electronic Town it's exactly one-fourth or 25 percent one fourth costs less than 325 because this let's highlight this is one fourth this is the other fourth this is the next fourth and this is the last fourth all right what percent of computers at best purchase cost less than 940 let's locate 940 here's 950 so 940 would be this line and um, costing less that's one here we go here's one fourth two fourths which is half and three fourths are less so three fourths is the same thing as 75 percent or three of the four all right our last question asks us to compare that's why they have the two box and whiskers uh, side by side is so that we can do a comparison how did the prices compare? Well, look, Electronic Town stops right here, and that is right at the median of Best Purchase. So it looks to me like half, over half, well, at least half of the computers at Best Purchase are going to cost more than Electronic Town. Okay, so I wrote that down. Half the computers at Best Purchase cost more than any at Electronic Town. And also notice, whoops, that our box, look how spread out. All of this means that we have a bigger range. Even among our median, we have a bigger range. Here we have a smaller range. So that tells us that the prices are varied. We talked about that word before, but the pricing at electronics, or excuse me, at best purchase, at best purchase, varies more or is varied more than Electronics Town. All right, so that's enough of a comparison for today. I think it would be great if you would stop and see if you can answer these questions on your own. I know I left you the other uh, box and whisker to try to make. So answer these and pause the video and come back and I'll have the answers for you. Pause the video. Thank you. All right. Hopefully you're learning how to read these. So 
What percent is 70 inches or taller on the Ravens? Well, here's 70, so that's 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, which is 75%. And then for the Lan Lancers, 75 inches or taller. Well, here is 75, so that's 1 half, 2 halves, and 2 halves equals, whoops, not a fourth, a half. My bad. Change that. 50%, 1 half. And then it says to talk about comparing the two. Well, look, the ravens are more spread out, so that's one thing you could mention. And next, I kind of made a mess as I was thinking this through myself. Let me erase. Look how the, um, the end of the lancers is right at the lower quartile for the ravens, and the upper quartile is right at the maximum of the lancers. So, um, you know, the ravens, 50% of theirs equals the whole Lancer's range. So 50% of the Raven's heights fall within the range of the Lancer's. So I've worded it a little better here. Lancer's heights fall within the mid-range, which is, we know, technically the inner quartile, the mid-range of the Raven's. Okay, y'all have a great day.